And that's what I tell them about in, in the class. When they come to five meetings, we give them a Bible. Yeah. I said, because... I said, I could give it to you, which I did when I first started mm -hmm. the class. I was giving out Bibles. Most of those people I didn't never see no more. Yeah, yeah. I said, so we feel like if you come to at least five classes yeah, yeah, then, yeah, that yeah. you're ready to receive this. I said, but step 11 said you got to seek him through yeah. prayer and meditation to right. improve your conscious contact with him. Praying only for the knowledge of his will for you mm -hmm. and asking him to give you the power to carry it out. Let me ask you something. When you teaching these, when you teaching these individuals, you give them a book after they came. How how four times? Five times. Five, five times. Time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And once you give it to them, see, see how you got it. You have to. The behavior patterns have to drop off. Like Paul said, I counted all things as dung. Yes. And he had to let everything go in order to gain Christ. Right. If we don't let things go, it don't matter how many books you give them. They got to let that stuff go that's in them. I'm telling you now. And, and you're right. And it, because it's a process, but the coming, it does help. But it's so much into letting go those behavior patterns that got you held up. That's how you was empty because everything had come out of you. It come out and of And then you had replenished it with the word. So this is behavior patterns. You see where I'm coming from? Yes. Like, like the lying, the stealing, the cheating, the, the whoremongering. The, the drugs, the yes. alcohol, yes, all that stuff have to be released from you and all. So those are things you have to stop. That's right. And even with me, like coming out of prison and not doing those things, it was still a point. Oh, the temptation is there. But 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 to me, it wasn't. It wasn't as. But let me ask you: When you came out of me, prison, when you came out of prison, did you go back? You went back home to Longview. Yes. Because I, I know that the first times, a couple of times when you went back to Longview, all the temptations, everything was there. People was, was so there. easy. The for devil you to gonna come. So the difference this time of you going back is because you had God in your soul. Inside, yes. When God set you free, you're free indeed. The transformation so when didn't you saw happen those in people, there, though. So I mean, when you I saw mean, those people that was still offering it to you, because I'm sure they were. I see it. I tell them all the time. I tell my pastor this. I see it. I smell it. One of the girls at the, in, my, in one of the classes says she walk in the store. You know how they have those beer counters in front of the store? The bu says she walk in the store and her body just go to trembling. She can't even be in the store with that, you know. But she hadn't been delivered. She ain't been delivered. But that don't, I'm talking about my wife smokes cigarettes. Don't bother you. It don't bother Cause me. Because you've been delivered. I've been delivered. It's the word that once it cleanses you, man. I see it. I smell it. I don't want and you it. can be in the same because a lot of people have to move out of the community that they were in just to get away from that to be able to you know concentrate. You know what? I can honestly, truly say that I'm an overcomer. Not brag, but but I am bragging on Jesus. But it's only God, and it's He knew that I wanted it, and I fought for it. I called for it. I even got to the point to where I got angry with God. I wanted it so bad. I wanted them dreams to leave. Yeah. But they wouldn't leave. Yeah. And I would dream about it night after night, and I pray about it before I lay down. I said, Lord, please. And I, when I'm in my dream, I'm smoking that pipe 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And I wake up mad. And I wake up mad. But I wasn't too mad to get in my word. I did not let the devil make me that angry, but I was mad. But you get in that word. I get in that and word. And how old were you when you got delivered? He was older. He was 40 something. 47. 47. So you were addicted for 20 something years. Yes. That's what I was Over thinking. 25 Over years. 25 let, me, let me just years. say this. When you, when you got delivered, the, the, you, you, the people got to understand this. And I talked to juvenile kids about this when I went to talk to them the other day. Mm -hmm. He delivers you. He meets you where you're at. That's right. If you don't change, why are you locked up? Because there's things going on in there that show if you change or not as well. Hey, come on now. You see what I'm saying? That's so right. you don't have to wait till you get out. So Dude. many people try to make it a wait till you get out. When you get out there, no. If God touch you right where he touch you at, That's in right. that cell, That's in right. that set, you going to know. Because it's activities going on around you that pretty much you could condone. That's but right. you don't even feel like dealing with them anymore. I was done. I was done, brother. Man, I got, I've got guys that called me that I was incarcerated with. I've got one brother that called me. He said, Gary Nelson, I just want to know, man, is you the same person that you were 
when you were, we was locked up. He said, I've called so many of our Christian brothers Correct. that was in the faith part. Mm -hmm. He said, and they tell me, man, I'm singing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. He said, they was in the faith part with us. Yeah. And he, I said, Joey, I said, man, I was serious. Yeah. I said, that's the reason it used to make me so mad when I would see a catch out in there. And, you know, he would kind of make it hard for the people that's yeah. in there. That, yeah. that was really humble. You got a, a wolf with sheep clothing yeah. on mixed in there, yeah. you know, and he and, and, and it used to make me so angry. I said, but man, I've got it. I, I, I've got a hold on to it. I've got one brother who I just come from Eastland seeing two days ago. Okay. Uh, he he tells the people and he wants me there <coughs> every time he tells his testimony mm -hmm. because I was in the conversary That's line. Beautiful. I was in the conversary line one day and I was so happy because the money I got was far in between. And I was happy and I was feeling good in the Lord and I was singing a song about old blind Oh I, yeah, I hear the Lord passing by. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and the young man heard me singing the song and when I got through singing the song, he walked over to me and he asked me, he said, sir, can you sing that song again? And I was kind of shy about it, but I sung it for him again. Two weeks later, here come the man in the faith part where I was dragging his bags. He he done got moved from a dorm to wherever he was. He was coming in the faith part. Wow. He said, man, he said, I come over here because I wanted to feel the freedom that I saw you felt in that conversary line. Wow. He said, I want to be set free. Man, I tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a revelation to where he's living it today. Where I went, where I went this weekend, it's in, it's in Eastland, Texas. All right. He lived on a golf course, man, wow. where a big lake was because when he came into the faith part, one week later, this particular man that owned the golf course and this he does prison ministry he came to the faith if you're not in the faith part this wasn't for everybody at the prison this was only for the people in the faith part he got to go to the kingdom man retreat out of all the people in the kingdom man retreat the man this is the person that he attracted that draw to the man, this wow. particular guy. Wow. So when he was moved away from the prison, the man continued to write him. When he got out of prison, they let him move to Eastland, Texas, to a place they got up there called the Redemption House, a really nice place. He's got a really nice job. He lives on a ranch. He's doing excellent. Mm -hmm. All because he heard me singing a song in the conversary line. Wow, he I'll delivered. hear the Lord passing he by. He was delivered, brother. Well, you know, the thing earlier when you was talking, just to go back and reflect a little bit, you know, um, what you had when you were talking earlier about being delivered, you know, and, and a lot of people, they, they, they don't get it. You know, they get the same blessing because God... He, you know, he shined the sunshine on the just and the unjust, and and we know that that this, these things happen. But I, I was tears came to my eyes the other day when I was talking to my brother because I won't let like you coming on here today. I'll have to reach back or say something to somebody to tell you thank you for coming on the show because I thought about those ten lepers that was healed and that one Samaritan that looked back. Yes, you see what I'm saying because everybody can get healed, but everybody out of out of out of ten only one. Only look one. Back. Look back. So, and that's the part you got to be. I want to be that one that that, that that praises God for what he's doing for us, man. That's My niece told me today, she said, Uncle, you are so faithful because, man, I, I went to Eastland, like I said, from Longview. It's four hours. It's, yeah, yeah. it's on the other side of Fort Worth. I went there Thursday evening, uh -huh. and I stayed there to Saturday morning. Well, I come through here. Going back to Longview, one of my grandsons had a birthday party. We all went to Cheddar's last night. When I got home from Cheddar's, I was so tired. I went to bed with my clothes on and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I woke up at 2 o'clock this morning. The enemy was trying to tell me you're too tired yeah, 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 to, that's, that's it. to hold the engagement that you want to have. But those was the lies that I used to listen to. He cannot get me with the same old lies no more because he can't tell me that I'm too tired because I know that I can do all things well, yeah, yeah, through yeah. Christ who gave me. Greater is he that's in you. Than he that's in the world. Yeah, so so I it. get on up. I get to my Bible. I go read my word. I go get in the shower and get ready to come and do this because I'm the one of the ones that want to come there back. You, you want to look back I want to come God. back and give to the people that and I had bought my parole letter I wanted oh, to, yeah? I wanted well, to share it with. I, I wanted to share my parole letter with y'all that I, this is what I wrote to the parole board they got me an F I'm not going to say it got me an F I one but this is what I in and and, and 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 what's so shocking about my F I one the uh, man guys what a F I one is is when you got 45 days to be released okay and I'm glad you said that oh I got to let them know 
Okay, but okay. I'm glad you said that because that's what I'm. Finna, that's what I was finna say. I didn't know how to say it. <laughs> I had the most unusual FI one that they ever seen in the world. Whoa! I got my FI one on a Friday, and I was leaving prison Tuesday. Wow! Yeah, because once you get it, you got 45 days, and he left. I, I got it on a Friday and left on a Tuesday, and left on a Tuesday because that's who God was for me. Wow, man! I'll tell you. Even in prison, my friends had to remind me, Gary, you're locked up. Yeah. Because once I was set free. free. You was free indeed. You're mentally free. I was mentally free. But this is what I wrote them. I wrote, I said, um, bo uh, Board of Pardon and Parole, with much respect to the Board and Pardon of Parole, today I, Gary Nelson Sr., come before you on the behalf of myself, my wife, and my 13-year-old son. First of all, to say I'm deeply remorsed and ashamed of my offenses, even more ashamed that I have to come before you today for my actions. I'm not proud of the action. I'm not proud of my actions, but one thing I can say that I'm thankful for is the classes that I have been given an opportunity to take that I know that have changed my life tremendously. To be a better person and a productive citizen of the state of Texas, and also a more devoted, responsible, and a reliable husband and father. And if and when I'm granted parole, I will give back to my community by talking in churches and even on the streets, telling and sharing with young men and women what I learned in TDC to help them from coming to TDC, to help some from coming back to TDC, and some, no, help some from coming to TDC and some from coming back to TDC. Mm -hmm. So with that, I say with respectfully that if I am granted parole, I will be gratefully thankful. And with that being said, I teach Bible-based recovery programs, I go to all kind of functions, speaking and telling what God has delivered to me, did for me. I now own my own business, Rock Your World, Landscaping, and more. I'm a more responsible and dedicated husband and father to my wife and, I mean, uh, uh, husband Obviously, to my yeah. wife and mm -hmm. father and grandfather mm -hmm. to my kids. Yes, sir. I now have a granddaughter that has me. She's eight months old. She's got me very small. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. Man, God is the best thing that ever happened to me. But he freed and delivered me and set me free. Wow. I sung a song this morning at the church. Give us a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> I sung a song this morning at the church. It's really my theme song, and I would love to give y'all some of it. It says, <clears throat> I've been healed by the Savior, and I felt fire from above. And I've been down to that river, and I ain't the same. I'm a prodigal's return, and all of my hope is in Jesus. And thank God my yesterday's gone, and all of my sins are forgiven. Yes, they are. And I've been washed by the blood. I'm no stranger to the prisons. I've worn shackles and chains. But I've been freed and forgiven. Yes, I have. And I'm not going back. I'll never be the same. That's why I sing all of my hope is in Jesus. I thank God my yesterday's gone. And all of my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by the blood. Man, 
man. Thank you so much, man. All right now. Hallelujah. All right Jesus. now. Say, man, that's what it's all about, yes, man. Sir. When God take you and and snatch you out the fire. Yes, sir. See, that's that, that's what it's all about. That's what he done. He yes. snatched you from a place where you could have died yes, sir. in your sin. Yes, sir. But you was delivered. And now God has used you and others are being delivered. Yes. You know, and and you just you just don't know what God is going to do. See, your testimony is just was a test. And you went through all of that stuff and you still here. A lot of your friends didn't make it. Uh, yes. And you and you yes. here. And yes. so with that being said, there's a reason why you went through those things. Paul, Paul in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, he, God showed him because he asked him to take a thorn from him. Yes. Three times. Yes. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. He says, he says, his strength was perfected in Paul's weakness. In Paul, so while your weakness was going on, uh -huh. God, <laughs> God was, was being, pretty much strengthening. He was being, but, yeah. He was giving. He was giving the people something through you, man. Yes. He was strengthening you, man. Because spiritually, you were being strengthened. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Now physically, <laughs> you were going through all hell. That's right. But spiritually, he you was, was being delivered. He was getting, and you was growing. And so, and that's the way God works. You know, when you look at Jesus and. I hate to go into it because I get going. I can't stop. But, but let me but, ask you a question but, before. Go ahead. Um, well, I was going to ask him a question. Go ahead. You mind? Okay. I want you to go back to whenever um, you were still on drugs and your wife, she wasn't on drugs. And because there might be somebody else out there in that same situation and she is trying to get him to go sober, but he's also refusing and she wants to give up on him. She's like, I can't deal with this. How could you advise uh, a wife? What I would what I would say uh, to a wife, because my wife talks about this all the time, because sometimes we do, even since I've been doing the way that I've been uh, doing the church and things sometimes, and, and I try not to make it a point, believe me, Sometimes I ask her to come and read with me and this and that, but she got her own way <clears throat> of handling things. And she tells me, she said, God have done a lot of a lot for me. And she said, you are a product of what God done for me. So what I would have to say to a wife or a girlfriend, if you really, really love your significant other, believe and trust in God and pray for that person. And believe that God answers prayers. You know what I'm saying? And put yourself in a position that that God will hear you. You know, and 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 it'll come through. It, but me, for us, I was only. Um, uh, how would you say this? I never hit my wife ever. See, I was going to ask that question. I've never, I've never hit her. So I, I never was a physical abuser. It was just from the way of drugs or something. So mm -hmm. I never, I've never ever hit her because I saw my mom, my dad hit my mama. So I, I've never ever hit my wife. And so it was just the abuse of drugs from what I did. So I, I feel that she loved me and, 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 and she, she put up with a lot with me, you know, and sometimes, sometimes I still don't think that I, I treat her good enough for what she done for me. You know, she 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 stuck by my side, and and like right now, her body's not in the best of health. She's down in her back, and and and, and it makes me feel so bad sometimes because she worked two jobs when it was just me, her, and Gary. Because like I said, it was sixteen. It's a sixteen-year span between her and Gary, and I mean Gary and Sebastian. And her husband was on drugs, and. So she just worked all the time. She'd get off one job and go to another job, and she just worked herself to death. And some some nights, like some days, like when she's painting and stuff, I, I it just it just I feel bad for her, you know. And then even with her being sick the way she is right now, I'm more a husband and a man to her now, and more respectful to my marriage than I ever been since we ever been together, you know, and I just thank God for that because. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's life, man. And, I mean, you grow as you go, you know, and like I said, I, and I was about to get started. I'm glad she pulled me to put a range <laughs> earlier because I would have been still talking, yeah. you know, because that's how good God been to me, man. He's you good. see what I'm saying? Yes. sir. But your wife is, um, um, you know, she's you. Yeah. Y'all one. 
You know what I mean? So when she's in situations, you're in that situation. That's why you feel the way you do. And and, 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 and let me tell you this. Like right now, I can see in our relationship of all the years that we've been together, would you believe that we're really just falling in love? I believe it. Because all that other time when it was the drug life, it, we was just existing. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed it during the days and things, how things happen, just like I was telling you, Erica, about people saying stuff and it kind of offend me. But we just, out of all them years, we're just falling in love. Well, I, I think I, I totally agree with you because how could you love someone when you didn't love yourself? Come on, man. That's the whole game. Like, you couldn't love her because you didn't love you. The Bible says that you ought to love your wife as you love yourself, or you know, or, or basically says if you if you do something in chapter, Ephesians chapter five, and you know, it, it tells you about how you know you, you hate your wife, then you you're pretty much hating yourself. That's what right. I'm saying. I'm that's just right. paraphrasing. That's right. So you that's she's y'all are one man, you know, and uh, it's just a blessing, man, that you guys uh, are still together after all these years, man. Yeah. And, and that you both still you're still here, no matter if your health is doing this or that, you're getting older. That's you right. know, but as you keep going, man, you know, just be an example to the other people that are around you. Like me and my wife, we we looking at y'all trying to figure out how to get us 35 mm -hmm. years. We only got 18 years. Yeah, you we got to get 35. So I guess, man, I may need to be giving you a couple of phone calls every now and then, and, praying with you. And what's so good about it, even like my wife's sisters, they saw what we went through through our addiction and stuff. And they had call, and my wife would say, this is Dana or Denise on the phone, and they weren't going through something, and they want you to pray for them. Yeah. And, man, that just blows my boat out of the water because that let me know. They see the change. They see me. Yeah. And, man, I'm just. You know what? It's funny, that, you know, because I remember earlier you was, like, going back to the same environment. When you look at the Legion in Mark chapter 5, when he was healed, he was cutting himself in the mountains in the tombs. Right. I mean, he was going through a real bad situation. And 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 they couldn't they couldn't even put him in chains. He'd break the chains, but that mean he was going through a lot, like you were going right. through, like we go through. And then Jesus comes, and 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 he runs out. They called him Legion because he had many demons. And 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 the demon says, "Son of David, have mercy on me." He knew right. exactly who and, he was. And so uh, to say that, I'm just saying, after all was said and done, he was clothed in his right mind. That's right. But the thing that I looked at the most in that whole. Uh, situation that it that that Mark recalled on was the fact that when you look at what happened, Mark, I mean Legion, pretty much uh, left him went in the swine and it went into the water, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus was there and then he left. They asked, you know they pretty much got scared. They wanted him to leave. He left. When he was leaving, the man tried to go with him. Right. But he didn't let him. He sent him back to the city. To the send him back to. The he sent city. him back to the Decapolis. He sent him back into that whole situation so that he can be an example. To them to see. For them to see. Who he really had exactly. been. Exactly. So they could look at him <clears throat> and see the reflection of Jesus. And that's what goes on in my recovery class. A lot of people are there. A lot of people knew me in my addiction. A lot of people that are there are people, some of them are. People he smoke with. That I smoke with. This one woman, <laughs> I used to go to her house Um you know, Eric, I ain't going to call her name, but I used to go to her house. She'd be wanting to throw me out because I'd be telling them, I'm going to give her some, and I'd be crumbing her. That don't make you selfish in, in more than many ways, but she's uh, one of my members, and people would call her weak-minded, but she's 15 years sober. Wow. And I, I thank God for her, and I brag on her in the meetings all the time, And but <clears throat> most of the people that, go to, that come to my classes are, a lot of people that are that have been uh, that have been in the in the drug life with me, which my mama haven't, but my mom even comes to my class just wow. to even give me support. Wow! You is know? the classes are are they like an AA class or is it like a? It's it's based on the same thing as an AA class, but AA's classes mainly talk about higher powers. 
you know, you can have a higher power in my class, but I'm going to tell you who the higher power is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I know way that I can open up the Bible and say something about another high power in Jesus' name. Jesus' name doesn't come out. And, right. and, and it's about Jesus. But mine is a Bible-based recovery class. Yeah. And well, and, well, and we're in the mouth of the beast on, on Mobley Avenue in Longview, Texas. And it's over in an area. And, you know, even, brother, I say that when I was on my addiction, I had never, ever heard not one step from a 12-step program. I had never been a, I feel that <clears throat> I, don't, I don't regret nothing I went through because it made my deliverance. Mm-hmm. But I believe if I'd have had a friend or somebody to introduce me to that, to where, hey, hey, Gary, I want you to come go to a class with me. <clears throat> like like some of my friends that are still out there, I, I go try to go get them and even even a little friend of mine that I know that's in a drug that's got a drug problem, I took him to Eastland with me this past weekend because I wanted him to see that you can beat this this Kingdom Man retreat. I wanted him to see all these guys who had been to prison. I wanted him to see them standing up, pray. Man, he cried the whole weekend. Yeah, yeah. I ain't seen him. I ain't seen him because I'm here. I ain't seen him uh, in a day and a half, but. It, he cried the whole weekend, you know, and like I told him, I said, brother, and, and it ain't up to me for me to, for you to, for me to just push it on you. I said, but God is going to do it in his own time. I said, but I just wanted you to see that, you know, you can have fun without it. We, I, we took my boat up there. That's another thing. God will give you the desires of your heart, man. One of the people that I, at the church that I go to, one of the one of the doctor's brothers just give me a bass boat. Wow. So we took the boat up there, and we went out on the big lake and rode in the boat just having fun. He yeah. laid out and went to sleep. Just I said, but you ain't got to have no beer, no, no weed or no. nothing. I said, it's freedom in Christ, man. Yeah, I yeah. said, you, you know so, and I took him up there just to let him see what what God is what God can do, and that's just like the people in the class that know me. I be I want them to see me. I say y'all, it ain't no joke. I say I don't when I'm riding by myself. I don't practice cussing. I said I don't have a cigarette. I say y'all, I've been set free. Wow. I said God did it. Man, God did it, and He can do it for you. Man, and that's 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 what I'm talking about, man. You know, <laughs> that's what that's what we're supposed to do, man. We're supposed to reach back. We're supposed to help people. We're supposed to give people the word. You know, once we say we've been delivered, you know, um, most of the times, a lot of times, people, you know, they tend to fall back into recidivistic behavior. You know, I know you were saying, I don't know where you're at now, but God has a time, an appointed time for right. him. You know, we can't, it's, it, you know, what, what Paul said, Paul, he says, one in water. And, and he said, Apollo, so he would so he would come through in water, but he say, and he planted, but he said that God gives the increase. The increase. So you don't have to worry about it. And that's <laughs> why I'm so hard on different people when they try to structure people's lives around. That's even, right. Even the way they worship. You know, I don't tell people where to go. I tell them who to know. That's right. I, I might not make it to the, to no building with you. That's right. I need to tell you right here. So that's the way I teach. I never have taught to tell you where to go. I tell you right where we at, that's so right. we can pray together. So Amen. we can we can celebrate together right here because we don't know. We can't change. What did you say the other morning when we was reading? One hair black or white? Or you, didn't you yeah, say that? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. So basically, we don't have no control over anything that we say we're gonna do anyway. That's so right. we need to serve to, God, worship God where we're standing. If that's it's right. God's will, that's really what it is. That's yeah. always the way it is. That's right. So, so that's the one thing I can say, man. We got to do that part. We yes. we have to teach people how to get it off the pages and into our heart. Yes. You know, and let those other things go. You're gonna have to let some things go in order to grow. Yes. yes. And if, don't ever live in regret. Because a lot of times people always sit down and think up, think back, just like you were saying, if somebody had introduced this to me, you know, in the past, not saying that you regret anything because you're happy where you're at now because, you know, you had to go through what you had to go through to be where you are now. Yes. And I've learned that just plant your seed, as you say, to people, because a lot of times you might say, hey, come with me here or let me show you this. And this person might not always do what you want them to do at that time, but you planted a seed. The next 20 years down the line, they could say, well, you know what? I brought this back to my or God brought this back to my remembrance because I had to go through all these steps before I'm able to learn to appreciate what you said and put it in action to make myself better. Let me you ask you a question. I mean? how's, your, how's your brothers and your relationship with your family members? Well, um, I'm glad you asked that. That's a good Come, question. Because man. I was going to tell That's you. That's a real good question. Uh, about my about my younger brother. Uh, Benjamin. Gabe. 
<laughs> Gabe is um <clears throat> Gabe is very proud of me, but you know, he's still he's still going through because he's he's been incarcerated a lot in his life. And I feel that he feels that he missed a lot of things, which he did. He was he he he, he was locked up. He's been locked up a while, back and forth, and he missed a lot of things. But the main thing that I have been trying to get over to him is that you can't go back and get what you've lost. Mm -hmm. You got to get where you are right now, and accept where you are, and thank God for where you are, and move on. Don't keep trying to reach back. And every time I feel that he gets out of prison, he falls back into the reach back stage, and it traps him again. And it ain't got so much to do with doing drugs, but he gets into just hanging out with a lot of the wrong people. So what you're saying is when he goes in, instead of him reading his word and getting himself delivered, he's not emptying himself. Well, he gets in the uh -uh, word. Because if you, if you change, see, that's going to change the way you where yeah. you do things. You're not going to even go back the same direction you went. That's right. So Because there's a lot of people that read. I mean, you both know that. Can quote scriptures that's and right. do all kind of things. But it's something about having an encounter with God. That's a true totally encounter. Totally empty yourself. Well, not just say you no, no, empty yourself. No, no, I'm talking yourself. about an encounter. When when you when like a Paul had in chapter nine of Acts yeah. when the, when he fall off That's his beast because the light hit him it's you got to have a light hit you moment That's right If you ain't had that then you ain't gonna change Your light hit you moment was on was was somewhere um, but in the recreation in, somewhere in a rec yard Okay man. so when the light that situation had to happen <laughs> That's what you just explained. So if that situation don't happen, I don't care how many times you try to tell somebody what they need to do, how they need to do it, who they need to know. It's not going to work. It has to be something that they have an encounter with God about and it delivers them. That's, I'm telling you. That's right. My brother's the same way. I think the best thing that you can do is lead by example and just keep serving God. Yes. And being consistent and believing and doing the things that it takes to pretty much make things to where he sees that light in you. And if he want to come out of darkness, cause just cause you see a light don't mean you go out of darkness. You might stay in the dark, right. but you see that light. That's right. That's right. And that's the whole game. So that's all you can do. I have, like I said, I just don't want you to get caught up in thinking that you, you know, God is real. Yeah. Very. Much. So you don't have to worry about whoever, whoever he's called, they coming. Yes. And if he didn't, then it's, it's God's, it's God who makes all of this to happen. Yes, not sir. us. And I've got I've got a couple of more brothers that you know that you know they're just out there. They're just doing their own thing. They're not into heavy drugs. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I've got one brother that's a preacher though. Okay. And uh, he's been preaching for like thirty years. And okay. He preached to me for many years, and okay. I, I would run from him. And yeah. And now I um, I hope he don't see this one day. But now I almost run from him because man, every time he come to town, man. This man is he has nothing sometimes I don't <clears throat> I don't feel like I deserve all the love that he pours on me mm -hmm. and he just cries every time he see me cuz he's just so happy he's just so happy for me you know God and, did he prayed for you and yes and he just he said man he said I've been waiting on my one of my brothers for so long wow he said man it just feels so good I'm talking about when he come to town he he, he lives in Houston but he's got his he, he, he got his own construction business mm -hmm. so he come down to Longview and do some jobs sometime. He can't work. Yeah. He want to find me. Oh, really? Man, and I just, you know, and he just love on me so much and he just, he just so thankful just, and when he come in town and he come over to my class, it just be a whole different outcome, man. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. We just turned from a Bible based recovery meeting to, to a, 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 a revival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just have such a good time, and I just thank God. He's one of my he's one of my older brothers too. He's ten years older than me, but I've got one brother that's fourteen years older than me, and I've got another my older my oldest brother by my mom. He's uh, sixteen years older right, than me. All right, all right. So, but this this particular one here, Jimmy, who's been preaching thirty years, he's um, he's ten years older. He's ten years older than me. He's sixty three, but man, he's a uh, He's very, um, very healthy and, 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 
and and working at, in working ability for his age, he's yeah. probably in better shape than I am. Yeah, yeah. Because he's been preaching ever since he was twenty five. That's good. So he's in the ministry real well, and him and I have a really good relationship. A lot of people say he and I look alike, but <laughs> I just I, I think I think it's good to have a brother that that I mean that can worship with you, and we've seen that in James and John and yes. Peter and Andrew. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Like it's always good to have well, that man, that, give, that that brother that walks with you when you're talking. To he God. gives me the that. he gives me the utmost encouraging encouragement, and he gives me the ump to. To, to go on and, and to move on and he just he just he never he never fails to let me know how proud he is of me and I just thank God for that and and my other brothers you know I, I don't bother them I don't try to push nothing. You don't have to I don't try to push nothing on them because I know the same God that yeah. set me free can set them free he can set them free and I'm a and I'm a believer in prayer. Yeah. Because I'm an, I'm somebody's answer prayer. Mm -hmm. So I'm just keeping I'm just keeping the broom in my hand. I'm just yeah. keeping praying and keep on sweeping. Yeah, I think because you're I doing know, a great job. I know that God is going to do it, and God has done a wonderful work on me. I'm just so thankful for for my wife and and my children and my grandchildren. I'm so thank you know I, I I always say I'm so thankful for Gary Jr. for my grandkids, but you know I know I got I got another son that's 16. I know I told him I said Sebastian, you better hurry up. I'm gonna be these other kids gonna be done whoa paw paw out for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet he's happy just to have you back in his life in a way to where it it basically he can be. Proud to see his mom and dad getting along and stuff. Yes. Man. It means, man, it heals. You yes. know, a lot of times we don't see the damage that we cause to our children. And, and like I said, it's a dysfunction. That dysfunction, now you're able to make it right. You know, like your father, he couldn't because he, you 14, he died. That's but right. You That's have an right. opportunity. God gave you a second chance. That's right. So and that the you main be thing able that, to be an that, example. that people talk about is stopping generational curses. curses. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that's what I want to do. Well, I think you've done it. I know you're yeah. doing it. So yes. that's the whole game. You're doing it now. And I, I and I know you're doing it because you just expressed that change to me. And nobody's not going to want to go and talk to people who are going through addiction. You're out now. You don't have to do that. Yes. I mean, you don't have to do it. You Basically, but you do have to do it. You yes. know, From God's standpoint of view and the vow that you made to God and what you said you wanted to do, you got to do it. But physically... Cornally, you wouldn't do it. You could do whatever you wanted to do. That's right. So, I mean, people sometimes try to look at you and try to say, oh, man, you're just doing that for this or that. But, you know, God knows your heart. That's right. That's God right. God knows your heart, I man. tell them that in my class. I say, one thing that I can tell you for sure is that when you make a conscious decision to give your will and your life to God, he knows it. I say, you can't pimp God. That's right. Because he knows the intents of your heart. Let me ask you a question. And you can make it gospel. Or you can make it R&B. I don't care what you do. Top three artists of all time. I have to do that on every show. Dead or alive. Dead any or genre. alive. Any genres. Any artist you. It, it could be. Uh, it could be. Uh, give me an example of. a uh, Donnie McClurkin. Donnie McClurkin. It could be Aretha any Franklin. It could be anybody. But top three artists. If you Dead or alive. It could be Michael Jackson. Shirley I don't Caesar. care. Shirley Caesar's one. Uh -huh. They don't have it. Whatever you feel, your ears like to hear when they hear it. Give it to me. Number one, Aretha Franklin. Oh yeah, you like Aretha? Yes. Now, I just threw that out there. Now I didn't even but convince you. I, no, I, <laughs> I, I I like her gospel music. Amen. Yeah. No, no. Who's your second? Number two. Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of you kind of sound like them. Easy. old What's them old boys? Them old brothers. Oh, um, that, that's who he sound like a little bit. That oldest brother too. The mo the mo the the, the, the boy about. the one who be singing with his sister, the whining, whining. yeah, whining. you sound like that old whining, whining yeah. boy. That yes. that's who that's who you kind of remind me of. Yes. Somebody told you that before? Yeah, I done told you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so what what who's your third one? My 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 third and 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 uh. uh. See, we made it easy by calling out some names but, for but him. Growing, but growing up, I really liked it. The, the, who I really tried to mend when I was growing up and singing was the Jackson Southerners. Okay. You don't hear much about them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jackson yeah. Southerners. I didn't heard of them. Yeah. They, they, Give me a song that they sing. <clears throat> what a song. They, they sung a song like, My God said in his words, 
It was a long, long time ago. All right. That he had prepared a kingdom for us. And I'm making preparations to go. All right, now. He said, if you make one step, he'll make two. And I know the Bible don't lie. Keep your hands in my God's hands, and he'll make it all worth your while. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So that's your number three. So it was, uh, it was Aretha Franklin. Shirley it was Shirley Seas and Jackson, Jackson Southern, Southern Nils, man. Yes, sir. Top three artists of all time, yes, man. Yes, sir. We sure appreciate you for coming on the show, man. And we ask that anytime you come to town, man, you hit me up and let's see what's going on with me. If you go out to talk to somebody, hit your boy up. I'll go with you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go with you. And where like, can man. somebody find you on social media if they want to reach out for we'll advice pray with or you, to pray with you? Trying to get over their like addiction? That. Well, they can come to... Um, they can reach me on my on my Facebook page of, as just straight up Gary Nelson. Or, okay, and uh, you know, are you on Instagram or anything else? No, no on Facebook. No, I'm just, I'm just on Facebook. On Facebook, and I'm oh, uh, uh, I be on Facebook every Thursday with okay. my class. I, I film my classes okay. on Facebook, Facebook, so they can go on Facebook under Gary Nelson. And you and, need to put something else with Gary Nelson because it's such a common name. It's hard to find you. So when people put in Gary Nelson, it pops up so many people from everywhere else. So yeah, you can you can edit and make it Bob. What you call it? Bible? Bible based recovery. That's what you, <clears> that's you what need you to put, put that in there. <laughs> okay. So it'll pop you up first. It'll, it'll pop, pop you up, up real first, easy yeah. if you if you put that in your name. It'll make it easy for the people. Okay. Find. Well, I'll get my niece. To she can handle it. She can definitely handle it. She can. She can. She can handle that yeah. for me. Oh uh, really? Oh yes, my 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 class is at is at uh, one hundred eight South Marbley in Longview. Okay. And like I said, we are in the mouth of the beast. And what I like about that so much is that people can walk up. If I was somewhere out on the loop or somewhere, they probably didn't wouldn't have the money to catch a bus or whatever. But I'm right in the mouth of the beast where they feed the homeless and everything oh, really? right across the street. They support my ministry and. And um, that's, that's it. That's that's what we that's do good. there. Do do you uh you ever run into uh, Forrest Whitaker down there when he was there? <laughs> mm, uh, 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 no, I, <laughs> but but his but his grandfather was my counselor in high school. All right, now. yeah. So I, I never run into Forrest Whitaker, but I also was a great ahead of Matthew McConaughey. Oh, when, yeah. when we was in middle school, yeah, he was a oh, wow. He was a grade behind me. Wow, yeah. that's that's good, man. Yeah. So shout out to Matthew. Matthew McConaughey and Forrest Whitaker, man. Yeah, from Longview. Already, <laughs> man. Hey, man, we, we appreciate you for coming on the show, man. Yes, sir, I enjoyed it most. Man, thank you so much, man, yes. and, and may God be with you. We wish you much success yes, on sir. your journey, man. Yes. We love you, brother. Thank you. I love y'all, too. Say, I, man. I hope it was a blessing. It to was, see. man. It was, it was. Boss yes. Talk 101. And we out.